Hello everyone. Today I will show you how to completely debload Windows to lighten it as much as possible. Obviously, we will not use custom Windows-based operating systems such as Tiny11 or Atlas OS, which, although good, are not as stable as the original version of the OS. This debload will especially help low-end PCs and those who focus on system performance and stability. It should be noted, however, that many features such as phone or Xbox connectivity will be removed, so you need to consider whether it's worth it. On the other hand, you'll go from this to this, which I'd say is a nice boost in Windows efficiency that can be very helpful in games like Fortnite, Warzone, or other competitive titles. So, first, I install the original Windows 11 ISO from the official website. I will do all the debload steps on a virtual machine because I cannot reinstall Windows on my computer. However, these first steps you will see are still necessary, so follow me. Once the ISO has been downloaded, we open the Chris Titus tool and use a little-known micro win function, which will actually do 40% of the debloading work for us. We load the ISO and start the process that will remove all unnecessary features such as Copilot and others. This is very useful because we will then be working on a system that is already fairly clean and without being bombarded by the opening of apps that we don't even know, such as OneDrive. Once completed, you need to install Rufus and connect a USB stick with at least 8GB of free space, and remember to remove all from there because it will then be formatted. Then, when Rufus is done, save the necessary files, go to the BIOS, set the USB stick as the boot priority, restart the computer, and follow the installation wizard, clearly deleting all partitions for a clean installation. I'm stopping the upload because, as I said before, I'll use VirtualBox to show you everything. Now that we are inside Windows, as we can see, since it is a virtualized environment running on part of my PC's resources, it lag a lot, which in a way is good because we are emulating a low-end PC. I will show you how the situation will change. First, I'll show you how most of the unnecessary apps have been deleted thanks to MicroWin. But now, to get started with the real debload, I open Chris Titus tool as usual. In the tweak section, I'll show you what I usually enable, but, when you do it, check what you are going to do or touch to avoid disabling something you might need. Then, before applying, I click the OO shutup box, which allows us to go even deeper. I usually apply all the yellow and green boxes, but I check the permissions to see if there is anything I might need, such as the microphone audio, or if you have a webcam, you might want to uncheck the video block. Once this is done, I return to the main program without restarting and apply all the checked settings. Then click apply and wait for everything to finish. 
If you see any red text, this is because, for example, OneDrive has already been uninstalled and WinUtil cannot find any files. One last thing I recommend is to enable only security and major updates. This will also remove certain processes that run in the background at the expense of updates, which are often buggy, as Microsoft frequently releases them. Once you have applied everything, restart the system. As you can see, compared to normal Windows, there are far fewer background processes here. To finish with debloading, I'm going to download Talon, which, despite being very invasive, allows us to simplify many steps. The light version only affects the privacy settings that we have already removed thanks to MicroWin. Since it affects very deep settings in the system, Antivirus could flags it as dangerous, but in reality it is a false positive. In fact, we are now going to disable Defender and, for safety's sake, put the exclusion in the C drive to make sure that Talon is not blocked. Finally, start Talon and wait for the restart of Windows. We have finally reached the end. But as I said at the beginning, at this point, all that is missing are the drivers, which you can find on your motherboard's website, while for the chipset drivers, go to the AMD or Intel website depending on your CPU. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to leave a like and subscribe to help me bring you more content, and leave a comment if you have any questions. See you in the next video.